Well, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Hernandez, and I'm a data scientist at the UW University of Washington eScience Institute. Uh, just a little bit about myself. My background is in applied statistics, social sciences, uh, educational measurement, actually. And uh, before that, uh, I did some data science work in the nonprofit sector, working with education data. Uh, and then way before that, I'm actually from South Central Los Angeles and Santa Ana, California. Anyone here from those two places? <coughs> awesome. Which one? Well, Los Angeles area, but okay. I went to school. Live in Santa Ana. Oh, nice. So you, yeah, so you know Santa Ana. And now I'm here, and I never thought I would be talking about version-controlled stakeholder reporting, building an end-to-end -end reporting infrastructure. So I'm happy to be here. This is my first time at CSV conference. It's great. I saw the, the llama, or is it a, um, it's not a, it's a llama, but it's a, uh, okay. Uh, not an alpaca? Okay. All right. Uh, I, I took a picture of it. I didn't take a picture with the, with the llama, so. Um, today, I'm just going to talk to you guys about a, a collaboration that's ongoing that a team uh, at eScience, including myself, have been kind of working on for the last couple of years. And just to kind of say this, I've only been at eScience for one year, so when I came in, it was kind of, I came into this project that already existed, uh, but it's evolved a lot from that year when I came in. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what the eScience Institute is, kind of who we are, what we do, and why we exist. Um, I try to do it justice. There's other people in this room that have way better uh, background on this, yeah, no, no pressure, right? Um, uh, the type of collaborations and projects that we kind of uh, foster and, and develop at eScience, uh, and in particular, I'm going to focus on a, a project that we have with the housing authorities in Seattle and in King County, and also the homelessness uh, management intervention system uh, in uh, King County. And so, We'll talk about that project as an example of how we uh, kind of started thinking about how we were going to uh, collaborate with these folks that are in the trenches doing work that want that have a lot of data and that kind of want to inform their practice so I'll talk a little bit about the different types of collaboration. So there's academic collaborations where we're thinking about research and things that are more traditional in academia, but there's also collaborations with folks on the ground that want to kind of inform their practice. And we find both of those as valuable as each other. So I'll talk about that project in particular and then some of the tools that we've developed and built for that project. And then kind of what the collaboration looks like. It's iterative, it's changing. This is all work in progress in terms of what we're building, but also how we're collaborating we're learning as we go it's not uh, there's no like science or uh, I mean there there are best practices and we're trying to kind of figure out a way that to kind of make this work and we're using this in our other collaborations with other folks so for example I collaborate a lot with folks in the education sector and I essentially borrow this blueprint and kind of implement it in that as well um, so what is eScience Institute? Essentially, we are the data science hub at the University of Washington. Um, we really do believe that open science is the foundation for scientific discovery. And there's several ways that we kind of do this, or there's three areas that we really focus on. So one of them is research, so data-driven research, both on the application of data science, uh, but also like the methodology that people use in this huge umbrella that is data science. Uh, we provide data science training. This could be in forms of workshops. Uh, so there's folks in, on staff that uh, actually collaborate a lot with the data carpentries and software carpentries. Uh, but there's also a lot of folks that are doing a lot of work on actually formalizing data science as a career track. Uh, so for example, there's a data science master, there's a, there's a way for other programs in the university to actually have, for example, a data science concentration in their curriculum. And so that's, I think that's huge, uh, kind of a huge contribution to data science as a field. And ultimately, we're building a community of practice that's uh, open, reproducible, rigorous, and ethical. Um, we really do kind of stick to those uh, principles and we try to practice them inside our academic collaborations but also outside kind of our collaborations with govern government organizations that have very sensitive data that are actually uh, working with folks on the ground and trying to you know uh, kind of help people uh, have better lives um, locally. 
So like I mentioned, types of collaboration in academia as uh, data becomes more available, as fields become more data rich, uh, folks need a way to be able to work with these data and we're situated uh, in a way that we can offer those resources to folks within the academic setting. Um, and like I mentioned, government and nonprofits, specifically uh, as uh, people fine tune administrative data kind of systems, uh, we see these as previously untapped data sources that we can leverage for research and inquiry. But like I mentioned before, that the organizations or the agencies that have this data can also leverage to inform their practice and kind of uh, kind of iterate and get better at what they're doing on the ground. And so these are kind of the, the two things, and these happen either formally or informally. So formally, for example, we do have some programs that folks within the institution and outside can uh, kind of apply to be part of. So for example, the Data Science for Social Good is like a summer program program 10 weeks where folks that are either within ac the, the academic setting of UW or in other kind of government organizations uh, locally can apply um, and essentially they turn in like a proposal for a project with their data that they need um, that they might need data science support for they, these folks might not have the resources for example to hire a data scientists full, full time and so they get paired up if they get selected with a data scientist that's in, on staff and they also actually there's students that apply from all over the US to be part of the projects so they get paired up with a data scientist plus some um, student support in the form of four or five students per project and this is in the summer there's also win winter incubator program in the winter where traditionally it's been more academic folks it's more personalized so people come in with projects and they they get paired up with a data scientist and they work kind of one-on-one -on, -one on a specific kind of data topic or project and this is for the the duration of the winter quarter and so they get kind of this one-on-one -on -one training or help on something that they want to kind of develop and from these uh, things either spin off into bigger projects uh, we also offer office hours, for example, people would come to our office hours and just kind of ask us whatever they want. I had a student once come in, I think they were participating in one of these boot camps and they need to help on one, a project assignment that they were doing. And so, you know, I helped them out, it's okay. Um, and so from this, like I got mentioned, one of the projects, for example, that came out of the Data Science for Social Good program about three years ago was a project specifically working with the homelessness uh, management intervention system in uh, King County. And uh, from that, uh, it was later expanded into a bigger project to incorporate the other housing authorities with the help of funding from the, uh, the Bill and Gates Foundation. And so they essentially, um, you know, they, were, they did a, a grant proposal where we were able to get funding to actually investigate not just the homelessness intervention system, but also the housing authorities. And the primary, uh, primary question here was kind of understanding housing instability in King County in the sense of uh, kind of the population we're exploring was homeless uh, individuals or people that are at risk of becoming homeless. And so they really wanted to understand their interaction with the human services through these several agencies. Uh, these agencies cannot, if, for example, share data with each other. They can't link these data. And so they came to us in a sense, say, okay, well, there's these three data sources. We want to understand how people are kind of navigating or transitioning f to and from uh, either homelessness to better housing situations or from very dire housing situations to homelessness. And so this kind of project was, uh, that's kind of the essence of this project to figure that out. And some of the questions these stakeholders have, for example, they're like, are there significant differences in those households successfully, successfully transitioning from like HMIS to SHA or KCHA? So from homelessness to the housing authorities. Um, what, are the, what does a successful transition look like, for example? So we spend a lot of time trying to f answer these questions with the folks uh, on the ground. And then more kind of deeper is can we model successful transitions from like HMIS to like a housing, uh, like a subsidized housing, for example. Uh, these are the kind of questions that we they give us and in a sense we we iterate through kind of the the data that we have and then try to answer the questions that they have on the ground so these aren't intended to be like public reports that they want to actually put out they just want to really understand like what's happening with our population and who's accessing our services how can we get better at that um, from the get-go um, like i mentioned this is messy administrative data three data sources 
there's no common uh, key to link across these. So then they want to know these trajectories. And so it was kind of, they were like, how, how are we going to do that? How are you guys going to do that? And so we implemented uh, kind of a, a data linking method, for example, that's prominent in, in medicine when they link medical records. We do have a lot of PII, so personal identifiable information that we can leverage to kind of find individuals across these different data sets. And so that's, uh, the majority of the the bulk of the of the work of of this grant was really figuring out going through different algorithms and implementing them and seeing which one was kind of the the better one to use for our case and like i said it's still ongoing right now we're using like a fuzzy kind of matching type of uh string matching implementation but we're moving towards more of a probabilistic method um to kind of determine matches between individuals so we're iterating at this piece as we go as well. And as you'll see later, there's a lot of pieces that are in constant iteration in terms of uh, making sure that we're doing things right. Um, at the foundation, of course, of everything that we do at eScience um, in our collaboration is really developing software that's open, reproducible, and that folks can use on the ground. We knew that we had this partnership with these housing authorities, and we wanted to make sure that whatever we use to, for example, process and clean the data, that would be able to, they would be able to be adopted by them after the, the for example, the grant end. So our grant has like a the end date that um, we hope that through what we build, they can actually implement and use it in-house for their own purposes. So we, we're, we're really trying hard to do that. Um, and I'm gonna go over kind of some of the pieces of software that, that we've developed that are open source and some that are not, and I'll mention why they're not open. So for example, Puget um, was based on code that was developed during this Data Science for Social Good collaboration, but it was re-engineered to fit our specific needs. So in the DSSG program, they, they had this homelessness intervention management system data. They did a lot of work to process this data and clean it up and make it kind of easy to use for analysis. So then we were able to kind of just leverage that, you know, that work that was already done and build on top of it in terms of making it more general for what we needed to use. They also added a lot of test coverage. So there's a lot of kind of unit tests built into this uh, software. And then because of the grants, we're able to focus and develop more kind of handle PII matching information, record linkage, and then we improve kind of our clustering method that we're using for this. One thing that was very easy to, in terms of adopting and using, the, the two uh, people that created this code are on our team right now as well. So it was easy to say, okay, well, we're going to use this. We're going to iterate and build on top of it. So that was, uh, I guess, easy and air quotes, but it was, uh, it really obviously made it easy to kind of iterate and shift to like making it more general to encompass a different data that we have. This other one is a housing uh, package that is in R. So Puget is actually built in Python. Housing is in R. And this code initially was developed from another collaboration at UW with social science with the uh, Seattle Housing and the King County Housing Authorities. And this code, what it did essentially, it uh, cleaned up the administrative data from these two agencies and it created like a, a matched essentially database of these two agencies. Um, that was maybe five years ago, but then it was adopted by the King County Public Health. Uh, it, initially, it was actually just one analyst who did further, further development to really, uh, to match it against like public health data. So they expanded it to kind of fit the needs that they had at the agency. And we had a decision to make at, you know, for this project in the sense, um, we were building our data pipeline all in Python. And we, we knew that Technically speaking, we could have uh, essentially built everything in Python in, in order to clean the data that we had from these agencies, but we really wanted to uh, kind of practice what we preach, right? They had already kind of ran with this and developed it to fit their specific needs. And so we decided to actually use what they had already done, uh, kind of develop this workflow pipeline of doing forks and uh, remotes and doing pull requests on their repository that they had and kind of uh, work with them to make it more general so that we can actually use it as well. So they, they were developing this to, for a very specific purpose that they have at King County Public Health. And so we, we continue to work with them. And I'm the point person on this one in terms of uh, making sure that it's general so that we can use it, but wh whatever we add doesn't break what they need, for example, to do more internally. Um, and so this, is, this has been a pretty awesome experience. It's, 
it's very hard and complicated, but it's actually, we know that the reward's gonna be great afterwards, right? So uh, part of the, kind of the challenge when you develop open source tool is that are people really adopting them? Are they using them on the ground? This was a case where they had adopted something and they were using it, and we just had to kind of work backwards. And uh, essentially, it involved a really crazy rebase that I had to do. And that, that was kind of when I, I came into the team and they're like, oh, you know R and you know some Python? Well, should, we should rebase this to kind of what, what they have because we were behind for like two years on what they had developed. And that was a great learning experience. And I could say I did a whole rebase and I live to tell this story <laughs> about it. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, there is this AWS uh, utility. So we, we interface, our, our, our work essentially is all in the cloud. Um, we, we use, for example, S3 buckets to store our data. And we need, uh, we need a tool to kind of help us get our raw data, kind of process it, do all the procedures that are in Puget and in housing, and essentially spit out this uh, data table that is used for analysis. So this data table has a linked record, for example, and we use that in order to answer some of the questions that the agencies have uh, for us. And so, it's, like I said, a family of functions that just processes the data from raw to linked, uh, linked longitudinal file, essentially. It does depend both on Puget and housing. And these are the data cleaning workhorses of this uh, pipeline. And then this really means that we do have to communicate and really uh, collaborate with the folks in public health that main maintain, for example, the housing repository that's in R. So we always have to, um, a lot of it, and I'll talk a lot of, uh, about this uh, near the end, it, it not only involved a collaboration, but it, it involved a lot of like training and uh, education in terms of going to their office and like sitting down with them and saying, hey, this is how the like a fork remote kind of workflow works and how to do pull requests, how to do kind of um, issues, for example. And so this is also a work in progress and it's, it's part of our collaboration. So it's not just us providing data support and information, it's also providing training and education in terms of uh, how to kind of collaborate with open source tools and technology. And I'll kind of show you a visual of how it kind of works. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, there's a housing repository in R, there's a Puget in Python. These are both open source repositories, so uh, anyone can look them up and contribute if they like. Uh, there's some useful cleaning function functions, for example, in housing. We're trying to actually build in testing now into the, the housing repository, so that's uh, kind of work in progress. But we also have this, uh, our AWS tools It is in a private repository, mostly because we're working with PI data, um, and we wanted to keep everything kind of secure and private, and so we have a private repository for that. And this tool essentially gets the, the scripts that we need from Puget and housing and produces this final like data table that we use. Um, and so I at the end, it produces this analysis data table. This is reproducible version control. We can essentially go from raw to like data table that we were used for analysis. So. On the ground, it looks kind of like, you know, we, we have this data that we got from our pipeline, and then initially we're using Jupyter, and uh, you know, maybe there's some R scripts and Python scripts that created, for example, tables and visuals that were then kind of put into a document that was shareable with our stakeholders. So in this case, it was like either slides or like a, a Google Doc, for example. Um, and you know, that was, our stakeholders would get that information. Luckily, we maintain a very uh, good relationship with them, so we actually meet with them every, uh, twice a month, for example, uh, and we talk about kind of what they see in the report, what other things they wanna, want us to kind of look at or inquire if they see some weird data, like number errors, and they let us know. And so that's, that's good. Uh, but we knew that it was not, uh, it was it was working, but we needed something that was a little better, and so that's when we started leveraging like R Markdown. We wanted to have a way to be able to version control and reproduce these like reports that they were seeing on their end, and so R Markdown is. Uh, works seamlessly with R. It's essentially a Markdown uh, kind of. Uh, a form to create markdowns using R, and then so this way we, we can actually not only uh, version control our code chunks that create the tables or the visuals, but we can actually also look at some of the text that goes into these reports, so we can keep track of these uh, in, a, in a more version controlled way. We, weren't, uh, we were happy with that, but we're like, okay, that's, that's great. 
but what if we actually dump these uh, reports into their own repository? Also a private repository, like I said, these are not meant to be public reports. Um, and we wanted a way for our stakeholders to kind of interact with this kind of open source uh, version control pipeline and, and uh, kind of leverage kind of the tools that we're using. So we created a repository for those reports. We gave our stakeholders access to, the, to this repository. And then we, we kind of had some trainings and talks about how to kind of use the issue, issue system in these repositories. So now they have access to the report, they read the report, they see something that maybe they didn't really see during our meeting, they might have read it after, later, and so now they actually create issues of things they see in our reports. And they tag people that, for example, our team is uh, six people, and so we're all working on different questions that they ask. These are different remotes, for example, in this repository. And so they're able to tag the people that are working on the specific questions. They're able to tag lines that they see kind of questions or they have, maybe they see a table and they're like, these numbers don't make sense. So we can actually go back to our pipeline and kind of iterate over that. We push a button and then it spits out the updated report. Uh, maybe not just push a button. I mean, it's, it's like you, you kind of push a button, but then you have to push and, you know, pull, add, commit, push, and then it works. And so, and, there, and it's like a work in progress, like I said. It's not, it's not something our folks on the ground are used to interacting with, like these interfaces. So then we need to kind of uh, bring them up to speed and it, we do take responsibility for that. We see it as our responsibility to make sure that they're able to kind of interact with these uh, tools. And so there's, I guess, double-sided arrow. So final thoughts, uh, there's no final report that we hand out because of the nature of the data and the way that it's iterative and alive, really. Uh, there are, there's a lot of turnover in the agency, so new people come in, they have new questions, and so we're, we're happy to kind of incorporate new questions. Uh, communication is key, and we take it very seriously. It's our, our stakeholders provide the content expertise and the context of the data that we have a lot of technical skills, but we might not have the context or the content expertise to really know what the data is about, and we take that really seriously. Education training is a component of our collaboration. It just has to be, and, and we're happy with that. So for example, uh, last year in April, in the beginning, we convened the group of uh, analysts that are, were um, supposed to work with these data, and we created, we adopted software carpentry lessons and kind of uh, made them into uh, data science for administrative data, for example. So we, we kind of tweaked them to address some of the issues that we had seen in the data. And so that was like round one, and the carpentry lessons were great because they're introductory. Now we're moving into doing more kind of advanced, more focused kind of lessons, also kind of barring those, the, that type of like car software car carpentry lessons where we invite our collaborators and we really focus on the training and the tools for that they, so that they can actually contribute and use this when our, pro our, our grant is over, essentially. Uh, like I said, our approach is a work in progress. And of course, the, a great team that I work with uh, Bruna Hazelton is a uh, research scientist at the eScience Institute. Her background is in physics. Ariel Rokem is a uh, data scientist, and his background is in neuroscience. And then we have Tim, Tim Thomas, who's a postdoctoral fellow at the eScience Institute and sociology. And we have Brian from Brian Haskett, a PhD student from sociology. And we have Luke uh, Rodriguez from the ICE school, the information school. He's a PhD student there. And so, yeah, it's like. Pretty, pretty amazing team actually really, really learn a lot from everyone like every time we meet. And we, we meet weekly uh, every, every week, so once a, once a week. So uh, this is my information. Uh, thank you, and if you have any questions. <laughs>